Howdy! In this unit, we're going to cover the basic operation of TEM. We're using the Technite TEM at MIC, uh, the Microscopy Imaging Center in Texas A&M University for this demonstration. In this short course, we're going to learn about the loading and unloading of the sample holder, how to acquire bright field and dark field TEM images, how to acquire diffraction patterns, how to use STEM, EDS, and EOS. This demonstration is assisted by my PhD students, Divija Yadav and Dershim Zhao. The first thing we want to talk about is the, the code trap. Before any TEM session, we want to make sure that the code trap is filled with liquid nitrogen. Uh, the aim of having the code trap is to improve the vacuum of the column. This is a standard single tilt holder. To load the specimen, uh, you use the pin to lift up the ring. When loading the specimen, we place the specimen, in this case, it's a copper mesh, into the TEM holder. Then we use the pin to lower the ring to secure the specimen. It's always safe to tilt the specimen holder to make sure the specimen doesn't fall off. So this is the O-ring of the TEM holder. Anything beyond the O-ring will go into the TEM, so do not touch any part beyond the O-ring. There is a small pin on the TEM holder. The pin should be aligned along the close line when loading the specimen holder. Now you see the red light is turned on and the turbo pump is automatically turned on. On the computer screen, it asks you to select the specimen holder. The most two common holders we use are the FEI double tilt holder and the single tilt holder. In this case, we use single tilt holder. So you click on the single tilt holder and click enter. As the pump is working, the airlock vacuum is getting improved. Usually it takes one minute to get a decent vacuum of the airlock before we can insert the specimen holder into the column. You can see the timer disappeared from the screen and the turbo on button is active. Meanwhile, you will notice that the red light is turned off. You can turn the holder now in the counterclockwise direction and once it's in the right position you, you will feel a suction pulling the holder into the column. You try to resist this force to make sure the loading process is as smooth as possible. After fully inserting the specimen holder we can turn the turbo off. The vacuum of the column should be below 15 before we open the gun valve. Right now, this is 19. While we're waiting for the vacuum, let's have a quick look at the instrument. On the very top of the TEM, that's the electron gun. The acceleration voltage for this TEM is 200 keV. Then we have three sets of apertures. The first set of apertures is called condenser aperture. Condenser aperture controls the current of electron beam interacting with the specimen. The brighter the beam, the larger number of electrons. The second set of apertures are called objective apertures. By inserting objective apertures, you can enhance the contrast of your image. The third set of apertures are called SA apertures or selected area apertures. Those are used for diffraction patterns. Below those apertures, here's the uh, viewing chamber. Since human eyes cannot see electrons, we can only see photons, we need something to convert electrons into photons. In the viewing chamber, we have the phosphorus screen, which does the job. However, because the light coming off from the phosphorus screen is very dim, that's why we need to turn off the light when we use TEM. We're going to start the session now.